So again, we're looking at solving a system of three equations and three unknowns, three variables, using a matrix. I've gone ahead and rewritten our system of equations as an augmented matrix over here. And again, that's just a matter of writing the coefficients in the same rows on the left-hand side. The line represents the equal sign and then the constants on the right-hand side of the line. So our first step again, we want row one, column one to be one, but it already is. So our first step is already done. Our second step is we want the second row, first column, to be a zero. So we can multiply the first row by negative two and add that to the second row. So negative two, row one, plus row two. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 2 is 0. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 4 is 2. Negative 2 times negative 1 is 2, plus negative 2 is 0. Two time, negative 2 times 0 is 0, plus 6 is 6. And then our third row, we still have the same as 3, 6, negative 3, 9. So now we want this 3 in the bottom left-hand side, our third row, first column, to be a 0 as well. So I'll write down the first two rows again, because those are going to remain the same. So 1, 1, negative 1, 0. 0, 2, 0, 6. <clears throat> and then negative 3 times row 1 plus row 3 because we want this to be a zero and we need negative three plus three to be a zero. So negative three times one is negative three plus three is zero. Negative three times one is negative three plus six is three. Negative three times negative one is three plus negative three is zero. And then negative three times zero is zero plus nine is nine. <clears throat> so we've got one in the top left and zeros below it. So our next step is we move on to the second column. Second row, we want that to be a one. So how do we make that that two a one? We multiply by one half. So I'll rewrite this up here. Our first row remains the same. One, one, negative one, zero. Second row, we want one half times row two. So zero, two times one half is one. Zero times one half again is zero, and then six times one half is three. And our third row remains the same, zero, three, zero, nine. And now we want our third row second column, everything underneath the one that we just created, we want that to be zero. So we can multiply uh, the, the second row and the reason why we use the second row instead of the first row is because we have these zeros over here. So when we add, we're still going to have these zeros over here. We don't want those to change. So again, I'll write the matrix down. 1, 1, negative 1, 0. 0, 1, 0, 3. And then negative 3, row 2, plus row 3. So zero times anything is going to be zero plus zero is going to be zero. One times negative three is negative three plus three is zero. But the negative three times zero is zero plus zero is zero. Uh-oh, we've got a row of zeros. And then three times negative three or negative three times three is negative nine plus nine is zero. So in a previous example, we saw we had three zeros and then a constant, and that meant that it was an inconsistent uh, inconsistent system of equations and that there was no solution. But what this means is we have zero equals zero, which is true. The variables fall out. We end up with a true statement. So what does that mean? That means we have a dependent system, and there are infinitely many solutions. So if you'll remember, though, we have the same type of setup as when we solved using 
elimination and substitution. So let's go ahead and, and clarify this sum. That what we have, rewriting this as a system of equations, we have x plus y minus z equals 0. We have y equals 3. And then we have 0 equals 0. So if we substitute y equals 3 into our first equation, we end up with x plus 3 minus z equals 0. Subtracting 3 from both sides, we have x minus z equals negative 3. And if we add z to both sides, we have x equals z minus 3. So if you remember correctly, we can rewrite this as <clears throat> our solution. The most general sense, there are infinitely many solutions. But how we've solved it, we end up with x, y, z, where x equals z minus 3 y equals 3, and z equals any real number. So let's go ahead and check this, just because we can. And we can choose any arbitrary real number for z. Let's use, uh, let's go ahead and just use 2. So let's say z equals 2, which means that x equals 2 minus 3, which is negative 1. And again, y equals 3. So let's substitute those into our equations. Uh, first equation, we have x, so negative 1, plus y, which is 3, minus 2. We want to know, does that equal 0? So negative 1 plus 3 is 2, minus 2 equals 0. So it checks. Our second equation, we have 2x, so 2 times negative 1, plus 4y, so 4 times 3, minus 2z, so 2 times 2. And we want to know, does that equal 6? So this gives us negative 2 plus 12 minus 4. Well, that's negative 2 plus 12 equals 10 minus 4 does equal 6. So that checks as well. And then our third equation, we have 3 times negative 1 plus 6 times 3 minus 3 times 2. We want to know, does that equal 9? So that's negative 3 plus 18 minus 6. So that's 15 minus 6, which does indeed equal 9. So that checks as well. So our solution is there are infinitely many solutions, and if we base it on z being any real number, then x equals z minus 3, and y equals 3.